I'm sure most of you are aware of the timeline object, but have you ever took the time to look into it? For me, I'm one of these people that know about it, know some of the basics, but I've never really touched and explored it, and I don't actually have a good reason why. So what I've decided to do this week is take the time to learn the timeline and teach you some of the basics to make a cutscene. There's lots of fantastic examples on Construct of the timeline object being made to make really simple cutscenes or even boss battles. So we're going to make a really simple cutscene today, teach the basics of the timeline, and actually show the difference between Construct and Construct Animate. Let's get started. So I've got my very, very basic scene here. And first thing we should probably do is right click and open the timeline bar. So you'll get the timeline bar here. You can also get this by clicking menu, view, bars, and then the timeline bar. Obviously the right click is the quicker method. And I'm gonna place this at the bottom right here and just adjust my screen slightly. There we go. So this is the timeline. It's currently empty. When you have a contract project open for the first time, it creates a timeline automatically for you you can create additional timelines. So you can have a timeline for maybe one object, have a different object under a different timeline or have a timeline for each cutscene. So there are some options with this. We're just gonna stick with one timeline for now. And first thing I'm gonna do is our player. So to add something to your timeline, just click on it and drag it to your timeline. So I've got my player ready to go. And what I want to do is a really simple scene where my player comes in, then the bird comes in, and then we say some text. So first thing that I need to do is actually click on the edit mode. This is going to send some options to yellow and these are the options that you can edit and change. So you can see there's a few different options available. So I'm going to actually start by taking my player and moving my player into the scene about here. I also need to decide when this happens or how long it takes for this to happen. So I'm going to say four seconds. So I'm going to go to the four second mark, drag my player in, and then I need to hit this plus to add a keyframe. So there we go, in four seconds my player will get to this spot and we can test this by going to the beginning and hit and play and my player will move into this spot here. Now there's a couple of things that we can change with this. So if I actually click on my player, the biggest one that we can do is ease. So there's lots and lots of options that ease, I'm not going to get too much into it, but essentially it's how the player moves. So you can have it where it takes a bit of time to speed up and then it goes really fast. It might be that it bounces. So let's do an in, out, back just to show you some different options. So you see it goes out first and then in, and then it bounces back. There are lots and lots of different options to play around with. So it's just a case of finding actually which one works for you. So you see this one slightly different, goes a few times and then bounces through. So you do some really interesting stuff. So we've got our player, our player's gonna go in. I'm just gonna change this back to our linear. Now let's put our bird in. So again, I'm just gonna drag the bird onto the timeline. And you'll see that it comes up with a little drop-down arrow so I can actually hide my players options now. I could put them back in. And we'll do the same with the bird, so making sure edit mode's on. If you ever want to move something, by the way, just turn edit mode off. If not, it's going to be really, really annoying. So just make sure you turn edit mode off if you just want to move it normally. And then when you're ready to animate it, put edit mode back on. Again, we'll come to where the bird comes into the scene. So what I might want to do is go to four seconds first, add a new keyframe, and then I'm just gonna move this. This is how long your animation currently is. I'll move it to about 10 seconds, give us a bit more breathing room. I now want the bird to come in, so I'll add the new keyframe here, and this is the one that I'm actually gonna adjust and move. So I want the birds to come to my player around here. Now, there's a couple of options you can do with the move command. So the biggest one that you've got is the path mode. So if we go to path mode, we have got this option called cubic visa. And what we can do is we can actually click on the blue square this time. So I'm just gonna click off and make sure I'm clicking the blue square, move the bird to position, and then we can use this red dot here to actually change the sort of arc of the path a little bit. So if we play this, that'd be a bit more clear. So again, our player is gonna come in first and then our bird will now follow this new arc and land in position. So again, something that's really, really cool and really, really simple to do. And you can see that the animation I've got for the bird is just playing by itself as well. Next, I want my bird to say hello to my player. So what I'm gonna do is take the text and there's probably a better way to do it. The way that I'm doing it at the moment is, first of all, I'm gonna write the message and then I'm gonna drop the opacity down to zero. 
Next, I can actually take my text box and drag it onto the scene. And I don't want anything to happen until about eight seconds in. So eight seconds, I'm gonna add in a new keyframe. And then at about eight and a half seconds, I'm gonna take my text object I'm just going to set the opacity to 100 and then add in that new keyframe for that. And this means the text will appear. Again, there's probably a much better way of doing this. Um, what you could probably do as well is just change this timeline bar to be at a different rate. Again, I'm still playing around with this. So again, we'll play it once again. So our player moves in. Once our player's in position, our bird will move in. And then our text will appear as well. Now, some other stuff that you can do with this is we can take stuff like the clouds. So I'm gonna take both of these and drag them on to the bar. And again, I just want these to sort of float through the sky gently. So again, I can go right to the end. I can add a new keyframe. And then I can just pick where I want them to be at the end of the scene. So I want this one to be over here and I want this one to be over here. So they're drifting slowly over 10 seconds, gonna be nice and slow. Next, what I also want to do is actually change the color of the sky as the scene goes on. So as usual, I grab my sky, drop it on, I'm gonna make sure that I'm at the start of my timelines and moving right back to the beginning. I'm gonna do something slightly different for this one. I'm actually gonna click on the sky and we can click on the sky this way and change the color. But I'm actually just going to add a property and you can see all the different properties here. I'm going to add the color property instead of axing it from this side. So now I can click on the color. I can set the value. Uh, we'll just use the eyedrop tool and I'll just select the color of the sky. And then what we can do is go to the end of the scene, add in that new keyframe for the sky. So making sure I'm clicking on the sky, add a new keyframe, and I can click on the color property once again, and then change it. And I can have this to be slightly darker. And you can see there's a couple of options that appear when you click on a particular keyframe. So I can actually change the time manually. So if I want this to be shorter, I can. Obviously I can adjust the ease that we've talked about all those many options already. So now if we play our entire scene, this is what it looks like. So clouds slowly move, the player moves into position, then the bird moves into position, and then our text will appear. So again, I'm not an expert by any means, but something that's really, really simple to put together it's only took us around about 10 minutes. We've got a nice little short cutscene. Now, to get this to play when you hit the play button, you need to do a little bit of extra work. So we're gonna right click, insert new object, and we're looking at something called the timeline controller, just here. So we're gonna insert this in, and then go to our event sheet, and then we can do a couple of options. So I've got on start layout already in there. We're gonna add an action to our timeline controller, and the main one that we want is play. So we can choose when this plays. So obviously I'm doing it on start of layout. It's then gonna say which timeline you want to play and you could also play certain tags as well. So I'm just gonna hit done. And now when I hit play, this is ready to start. So as I mentioned, there's also construct animate, which is a slightly different version of construct you can use. So let's talk about the big difference between the two. So I'm just gonna create a new project. And the main thing that I've spotted with this, so when you go to menu, you can go to project, then export, and actually we can export as videos. So this is probably the biggest difference, playable ad as well. So what I recommend is if you want to create a cutscene that is pre-recorded and then plays as a video, then construct animate is your best trend for that. If you want something to happen in your game, such as a boss fight, or you wanted a cutscene that played in real time, then use normal construct. I'm sure construct animate will get better and they'll add more features to it. But the main difference I can see at the moment is just that ability to export your final animation that you've made to a video, to a GIF, um, and then use that inside a bigger game. But that is it for today. I just want to do a basic introduction to the timeline. Let me know if this is something you want to see more of and we can maybe use it to make boss fights. Until then, I'll see you in the next video.